Hi everyone, it's Jack Tian. Just wanted to make a video about multifocal lenses. Multifocal lenses um, have been out for about 20 years, maybe longer. Um, they are the lens that you would want to have if you expect to see a uh, full range of vision, which means distance, intermediate, and up close um, in both of your eyes or in each of your eyes. Uh, the other options are extended depth of focus, light adjustable lens, um, but neither of those uh, are expected to get you seeing uh, all of the, the three dis different distances for everyday tasks. Um, the multifocal lens so is unsurpassed for range. And that's great if you want the two eyes balanced. Um, if you have any trouble with the two eyes being a little offset from each other, then multifocal lens becomes a really good option because then there's no offset. Um, if you have two healthy eyes, they you'll see equally well out of each of them. Um, the multifocal lens does have some downsides. Um, although over the last 10 years, most of these have been worked out and I, I would not expect you to be bothered by some of these downsides. So we're, we're gonna go over um, some of these downsides now. And, and the main one that you've heard um, friends and family who've gone through cataract surgery who chose a multifocal lens um, is rings around headlights. And you may have heard of them complaining about this for the first month or two. Um, this was a, a very real issue with um, older versions. We're on our fifth or sixth generation uh, multifocal lens these days. The newest ones just came out. Um, they go by the name Odyssey and Panoptics Pro. Not to be confused with Panoptics, the Panoptics Pro is a very different lens with very little side effects. Um, so uh, the rings will look like um, very, very bright, not sorry, not very, very bright, but bright rings around a, a light source at night. So you only notice it usually with night driving. Um, in the dark, a bright light source, let's say a headlight um, is maybe six inches uh, in diameter, then the rings may be about you know, 12, 12 inches or so, one foot in diameter. Um, they're, they're very defined concentric rings. Um, often patients will say there's three, like a cluster of three rings, um, you know, from the outer ring to the, to the light source uh, at, at some interval in between. Um, and so that's, that's a very classic description of these rings. Um, they won't be huge. Uh, in the past, they, they're very variable, uh, depending on the state of your cornea and other aberrations of your eye. These rings could be huge. And uh, a, a lot of patients in the past, again, uh, would consider you know, exchanging these for non-ring lenses because they're so bothered, they, uh, their depth perception is affected. Um, so multifocal lenses historically has not been a great choice for patients who do a lot of night driving. So, so truck drivers, um, folks who, who work in the night uh, and, and drive their car at night um, to get to work. Um, but that has since been almost resolved. Although you will almost 100% of the time see these rings um, in the first you know, several months after surgery. Uh, but there is something called neuroadaptation that happens, uh, you know, between you know, from from when you get the surgery. But usually the effects uh, attenuate these rings by about you know nine to twelve months after surgery. A way to look at it is um, some folks have you know a, a normal sized nose. I, I I have a very small nose, um, but they would say, oh, I close one eye and I can see the bridge of my nose through the other eye and you know, vice versa. But if I open both eyes, I don't see my nose. Um, and so that's, that's a bit of that is neuroadaptation. Another way to look at it is uh, a lot of us have floaters, um, but we're not usually seeing the floaters. We just don't notice them unless you know, we're looking at a blank wall, a white wall, and then maybe you'll see your floaters. Um, but when you you know, when you don't pay attention, you don't see them, but they're always there. Um, similarly for this lens uh, with the rings, if you look for the rings, you will find them. Um, and you know they're working, the lens is working if you, if you do see the rings. Um, but over time, they'll go away and you won't notice them anymore. Uh, but how much time depends on 
Um, a lot of it is, you know, we, we use personality as a gauge of how adaptable the brain is, right? You, you may have n filled out a form uh, for some of these practices that asks, you know, rate yourself or zero to perfectionist or, um, or some, some other way to gauge, um, you, the, you know, how type A you may be. But a, a lot of it is these are just with the absence of, of a better tool, a way to gauge how adaptable um, your brain is and how, how long will it take or if you can accept uh, a multifocal uh, intraocular lens as the new way of seeing. Um, and, you know, but, but I, I have to say with, with the newest lenses, because the side effects are smaller, um, these older methods to judge whether a patient's going to, you know, maladapt in a multifocal lens becomes more um, or, or less useful. Uh, I'll give you some statistics. Uh, with the Odyssey lens, I've done about 200, maybe maybe more than 200 of these lenses over the last six months or so. Um, I've had no patients ask me to remove them um, or they, they're maladapting because of rings. Um, some patients tell me that they see the rings, uh, others don't. Uh, even in the first week, some patients um, just don't really notice the rings. Maybe they're not driving a whole lot at night. Maybe it's summertime and, you know, there's no exposure. But, um, you know, six months is a long time. If, if there were patients in the front end who are maladapting, um, you know, I would know by now. But, you know, it's been very quiet and there's, there's nobody uh, bothered uh, by, by these rings. So that is really good. It tells me that the technology has come you know, quite a long way from the previous version of these lenses, from the synergies and the symphonies and the Panoptics classic um, Technus uh, to now Odyssey and Panoptics Pro being fantastic. Um, the other downside or uh, historical downside is the, um, the uh, contrast sensitivity. The contrast sensitivity, um, you can think of it this way. Um, you know, if I'm using a really high quality camera with a great lens that shoots photography and, and you see every detail in the forefront, but the background is all blurred, um, that's, you know, really good high quality image, but it doesn't have much range, what we call depth of field in photography. In, uh, you know, similarly, there's a concept of depth of focus for, for lenses. And um, with a multifocal lens, you have tremendously high depth of focus. It's a trifocal lens. Um, nothing really beats that. Uh, but because of that uh, multifocalness, your trade-off is going to be quality of vision and quality uh, is usually measured by contrast sensitivity. Um, now that's the historical way to look at the multifocal lens. Now with, uh, I'll give you an example, the Panoptics Pro uh, has a, con a contrast sensitivity um, in, in this lens that uh, equals some of the monofocal lenses out there. Um, it, it has just such great light transmission. It's very clever in its light allocation to the different, uh, different uh, focal lengths um, that, you know, it, it's really come a long way since, since the original, you know, trifocal that came out, you know, 10 years ago or so. Uh, so these days we can, we can even implant these lenses in eyes that may not be, you know, perfectly healthy, but if the patient can see with their glasses, you know, 2020, 2025 or so, um, I have full confidence that the, the multifocal lens um, will work well for you. And um, there are some other considerations uh, for multifocal lenses. And one key one is if you've had LASIK surgery, PRK, uh, other variations such as SMILE, um, basically surgery to remove tissue from your cornea or, or to reshape the cornea, then uh, again, historically, uh, we typically will shy away from using the multifocal lens because such surgeries and the corrections um, and changes to your cornea uh, produce what, what, you know, for lack of a better word, a multifocal cornea. So it already at your cornea plane, uh, at your cornea decreases contrast sensitivity or, or decreases the image quality. So then pairing that with a multifocal lens um, can 
maybe exacerbate that that issue, give you more halos, uh, maybe make it harder to see in dimly lit situations. Um, but again, these these newer lenses, Odyssey, Panoptics Pro, have um, much better contrast sensitivity, almost you know the same as some multifocal, uh, some monofocal lenses out there. Um, that this this becomes less of an issue. Um, so we, I personally do uh, look at the cornea scans, and if I find that you know the cornea looks pretty good, there's not too many higher order aberrations. Um, the spherical aberration is not too bad, uh, and or if you tell me you know I only had about three diopters or less correction, four diopters or less correction on my cornea in my original LASIK surgery, um, then that gives me some confidence that you know the multifocal lenses that we have these days will you know. Um, make you very happy. Um, what else can I tell you about these lenses? The last thing to avoid any surprises, um, so, so now you know you will see rings, uh, but they fade and, and go away as, as the brain gets used to them. Um, the second thing that, uh, you know, this hasn't changed, <clears throat> but uh, these multifocal lenses are what, what are called fixed lenses. Um, as opposed to an adjustable lens, like the light adjustable lens. A fixed lens, when we implant it into your eye, um, we pick the lens that um, fits your eye the best on paper. So that's based on the calculations that we've made, uh, based on the measurements of your eyes. Uh, in reality, uh, I would say about 1 in 20 patients will heal in such a way that they develop uh, they, they become off target or otherwise they develop a little bit of prescription uh, uh, that's not predicted in, in our original calculations. Um, and that usually is part of the healing process that's, you know, out of, you know, we can't predict that. And what happens sometimes is that the lens can shift more forward or a little more back depending on how you heal, how much scar tissue builds up behind the lens. Um, you know, a, a lot of these factors, um, sometimes you get a little more astigmatism if you heal in such a way in a certain quadrant more than, than the other, then the lens can tilt a little bit. So if, if you end up with a, a lens that, you know, may not fit your eye so well, then your vision will be somewhat blurry um, after surgery. And, and, but don't worry, that, that is, we don't know who that's gonna be. And uh, I would say, it's going to be less than one in 20 patients. But what we do is we bring you, your eyes back into focus with LASIK surgery at the one, uh, sorry, the, at the three months mark. Um, we, we wait three months because, you know, more of this scarring, this healing can, can happen to um, produce more uh, variability in, in the prescription. So we really, really, really want to not chase our tails. And if you do an early LASIK, um, to, to bring back focus into your eyes, um, sometimes it can change again. And, and we really want to um, make sure that we're measuring the, the final uh, stable uh, refraction before we, we do any enhancements with, with LASIK. Now you may ask, um, you know, why would you offer me LASIK when uh, in the past someone said that, you know, LASIK was not an option for me? And the, the answer to that is um, because the correction that we're doing after the, the lens is implanted, the off-targetness, it typically is less than one diopter. And when, when someone tells you uh, you're not a good candidate for LASIK, it's usually because uh, you have a really high prescription uh, or your cornea is uh, you know, not stable enough. But the ROEH patient or the cataract surgery age patient has a very stable cornea just from decades of UV sunlight cross-linking on the cornea, um, you know, th and the correction that we're making is, you know, maybe a tenth of the uh, amount or magnitude of, um, you know, what what you would have had you know, once upon a time um, wanted to adjust with LASIK surgery in your youth. And so it's a matter of degree um, when it's just one doctor or less, um, you also tend not to get, you know, the, the symptoms of dry eye. Dry eye, when you, when you remove so much tissue from the cornea, um, when, you, 
when you introduce so much heat uh, to ablate that tissue to reshape the cornea, um, when you go over a certain amount, let's say five diopters, um, you know there, there's so much uh, tissue removed, more thermal damage that the the corneal nerves on the anterior surface of the cornea um, tend to be you know affected, they, and they they may not grow back fully. Um, after LASIK surgery, but when you're doing just you know a half diopter, one diopter or so on the cornea, um, that's not a whole lot of uh, you know a whole lot of energy. Um, those nerves should uh, you know in comparison grow back almost fully uh, and quickly. Um, so LASIK is very safe. Sorry, that's a bit of a digression, but just um, that's the second point. One rings. Two is being off target about 5% of the time, but if you're off target, we usually will give you um, contact lens or something to wear uh, through that first three months while you're, you're continuing to heal. Um, and then at that point, um, you know, you and I or you and one of my partners will meet and we'll, we'll correct all of that uh, off targetness, uh, residual prescription um, by, by doing LASIK or PRK. Um, and that is very, very spot on accurate. Um, so don't worry if you're off target. Um, it's not very common, especially in today's uh, day and age when these uh, IOLs are manufactured to such a, um, you know, they, they, they're so well quality controlled, they're manufactured um, in Holland, Switzerland, uh, in all these places that are just so good at what they do, um, or in America, in, in, in Texas. Um, uh, so, um, in summary, you know, a lot of what you've heard about multifocal lenses are no longer true. Uh, the rings are no longer a, a big deal. Um, you know, you will get used to them very quickly. They won't bother you, uh, even if you drive at night. Although I still caution, you know, if you drive a truck, uh, if your work is driving at night, um, if you are a police officer, you drive you know, a lot at night and you really rely on just the best quality vision possible. Um, those are folks who, you know, would be best suited in a light adjustable lens um, where there are no rings, just very crisp uh, night driving vision, pilots also. Um, but if you're uh, not driving that that much, um, these won't bother you. And, uh, and don't worry about the uh, contrast sensitivity issues in the past, the the complaints of, you know, uh, I don't see very well with with dim lighting. Um, you know, it, it it's going to be very very almost as as close um, as as you know a, a monofocal lens. Um, you know, and again, monofocal lenses haven't been really been updated. They don't get updated as often as multifocal lenses tradition every five years or so. Monofocal lenses. I think we're still using ones from you know. 10, 20 years ago. Um, anyways, I, I hope that um, relieves some, some of your concerns about uh, multifocal lenses. I, I really think if you have not had LASIK surgery in the past um, and you're able to see well with your glass lens contacts and you measure you know, roughly around 20, 20 or so, um, which indicates to me you have healthy eyes, then uh, multifocal lenses would be just wonderful for you. Um, they mean almost all patients uh, will be, uh, I'm going to say 100% of patients will be out of glasses for uh, with multifocal lenses for everyday um, tasks. Um, it may not be 100%, but it's very close. Uh, so, so they are, you know, a really, really good choice. Well, thank you very much.